Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it to Joel chapter 2. This is going to be part B. In part A, I have already read the entire chapter of Joel chapter 2. And a lot of people get confused when they read the Bible because sometimes you could be reading a chapter. It'll be talking about the present. Then it'll talk about the future. Then it'll talk about the past. And then it'll talk about the present. And then it'll talk about the future. Well, that's what Joel chapter 2 is. It jumps back and forth. But from God's perspective, you know, God sees the end from the beginning, and time is irrelevant to God. I mean, you know, let's face it. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, they would have lived forever in the bodies that they had. What concept of time is there? I mean, let's face it. If you live forever, I mean, does time really exist? But... Um, you know, you think about it, it takes just as much faith to be an atheist as it does to believe in God. So, all right, we're going to be skipping around in Joel chapter 2, since in part A, I've read the entire chapter. So, if you want to, you can read along with me. I'm going to be jumping around, uh, but I'm going to go through Joel chapter 2, and then I'm going to skip to other parts of the Bible, now, the thing is, when you use the modern versions of the Bible, they destroy the association with words. Like when you have words and a, or a phrase, like Day of the Lord, when you look up all the other places where the words Day of the Lord appears, for example, it gives you an idea of what sort of events will happen and what to expect. But the modern Bible versions will either delete or change the wording so that you don't associate these things. Whereas the King James Bible does this. And of course, they'll tell you, oh, well, you know, it's the, 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 the modern versions update the language and they use modern language and they're Easier to read. No, they destroy the word association so that you don't get the connection. And then they'll say, well, you know, they do this for the copyright. Okay. So if they're doing it for copyright, guess what? They're doing it for money. Because only the copyright holder can print that. Can you imagine that? People doing that stuff for money. Wow. All right, uh, let's see. All right, in Joel chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, well, we'll read, we'll go ahead and read verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm. Wasn't there a lot of trumpets blown in the Bible, in the book of Revelation? Isn't there seven trumpets blown? Oh, yeah. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh, or near, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many, many generations. All right, so let's take apart uh, verse 2. It's going to be a day of darkness and of gloominess. So where have we seen this before? Well, let's take a look. But before we... Uh, is there some place in the past where there was a day of darkness? 
Ooh, you know what? How about the book of Exodus? Yeah. Let's take a look. Now, if you take a concordance or an online Bible search tool like uh, KingJamesBibleOnline.org, you can do word searches. And you will find in the King James Bible that the first time that a, a word, generally a word is used, the Bible will give you an, an explanation of what it means. For example, in Genesis 1.1, we're going to take a look at the word darkness, okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, that's, there was a beginning. You know, when you make something, it has a beginning, right? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness, darkness, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Did you know that a new day in the Hebrew calendar, a day starts when the sun goes down? That's the beginning of a new day. Well, it's night and day. You heard the expression night and day? Oh, that's as diff those two people are as different as night and day. Well, night is the beginning of a new 24-hour period, not midnight. You know, not midnight. I don't know why we go to midnight as the beginning of a new day, but when the sun set, that was the beginning of a new day in the Hebrew calendar. And then when the light comes up, you know, hey, first there's darkness and then there's light. And where God's spirit is, it's darkness. All right, so, all right, let's look. All right, let's go to Exodus chapter 10. Moses is confronting Pharaoh. Pharaoh had enslaved the Hebrews, not necessarily the people calling themselves modern-day Jews. Let's take a look. We're going to skip around a little bit because I don't want to make this a three-hour study. Well, it, it probably, it will be a three- or four-hour study, but not necessarily on this particular lesson. Verse 1, Exodus 10 and verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. Did you catch that? The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before them, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. You know, when you take a look at the plagues in the book of Revelation, they're very, very similar to what God did in Egypt. The plague of locusts. I did a Bible study uh, series on this. It's on my playlist, if you're interested. I mean, you know, I, I don't put this stuff out. I don't charge people to listen to my stuff. I, I give it to you for free. So just remember, you get what you pay for, people. All right, so God is going to show Pharaoh and Egypt that he is the Lord. 
And in the end times, God's going to use other very similar things to show them, I am the Lord. Not the beast, not the antichrist, not the man of sin, not the son of perdition. No. Not the false prophet. No. The Lord's going to say, I am the Lord. And I'm going to do all these things. It's going to be very similar to what he did in Egypt. So, Verse 3, And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, Behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast. You know what locusts are? They're huge. They're giant grasshoppers. And they eat everything. They will eat the grass. They will eat the grains. They will eat the fruit. They will eat the trees. They eat everything. Behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth. There's going to be so many locusts, you're not even able to see the ground. All you're going to see is piles of locusts, okay? That one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you, from the hail. Ah, remember there was hail mingled with fire in, in Exodus, which we read previously, well, which was previously in, in the book of Exodus. I've, I've covered this before. But there's going to be hail in the book of Revelation. Hail, giant hailstones. God throwing them down from heaven. About the weight of a talent, which I believe is 70 pounds. You know what happens to you? You get hit in the head with a 70-pound hailstone traveling 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. Uh, you ever heard the expression, oh, he lost his head. Yeah. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hail, and ye shall and and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth, unto this day, and he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, how long shall this man be a snare unto us? You know, a trap. Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds, will we go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go, and your little ones. Look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now ye that are men. Oh, in other words, nope, not your women, just your men. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord, for that ye did desire, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. So, in other words, you're going to keep the women behind, because I want you to come back and return, so you can be continue being my slaves. But the Lord has other ideas. Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt, for the locusts, that they may come up 
upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they before them that were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened. Ah, so that the land was darkened. You know what happens when you got clouds and clouds and clouds and clouds of locusts flying in the air? Sun can't shine through clouds, right? The land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left, and there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Wow. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive me, I'm sorry, now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin, only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord turned a mighty strong wind, uh, west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. I'll tell you what, people, when you seek the Lord with all your heart, you want the Lord more than anything else in this world, more than your sin, more than your flesh, fleshly desires, you'll find him. But you know, there comes a day when the Lord will harden someone's heart. When somebody wants their sin more than they want the Lord, you know, there's a day when the Lord just closes the door and, and that's it. That's it. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. go. Ah, let's get back to the good stuff here. All right. So in verse 20 it said, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness, darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Wow. Physical darkness, spiritual darkness, both, right? Darkness that can be felt. Ooh. And Moses stretched... Okay, so here it is. You've got darkness. I mean... Can you imagine the sun doesn't come up for three days? I mean, who can fight and argue against the God of heaven that can control the sun? I mean, can you imagine that? Your whole life, the sun comes up every day. And and I'm not talking about August 21st, uh, 2017, when the, you know, the, the eclipse. I mean, that's not a, you know, 30-minute deal. I'm talking you know, or two-hour deal or whatever it is. I don't know. But I'm, you're talking three days of darkness. Sun doesn't come up. Or whatever. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness, which may you be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there's a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Do you know there's going to be darkness? It was in the book of Joel. It talks about the latter days. In the book of Revelation, it says it's going to be darkness, right? Sounds like I got a Bible study on just darkness, doesn't it? And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither arose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light. 
light in their dwellings. So Egypt was dark, and the Israelites in the land of Goshen had light, because God's their light. Do you know that in, in the uh, Revelation, what is it, 21 and 22, chap, uh, 21st and 22nd chapters of Revelation, there's not going to be a sun and a moon. The Lord's going to be the light. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, we're going to skip around, but we're going to go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Evidently, the other Jerusalem is not so holy. Uh, let's see. Let's skip to verse 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. So evidently there's not going to be uh, any night. So, so here it is. You had so many locusts, it was dark, and then the sun didn't, ex you know, in Egypt, the sun didn't shine for three days. All right, so let's keep going. Darkness. All right, so where else is there darkness? In Deuteronomy chapter 5, this is talking about when Moses was given the Ten Commandments on tablets of stone. Uh, verse 20. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, and that's not for, uh, we're talking about a donkey, not a, not a sodomite, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all, all your assembly in the midst, I mean, in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud. So we got fire, we got cloud. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the midst, in the mount, in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness. With a great voice, and he added no more, and he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. You know, in the Old Covenant or Testament, God wrote his laws on tab tables of stone. But in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 16, this is the covenant. Now, what's a covenant? A covenant's like a, a contract. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. 
I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. See, God doesn't want us to keep his laws on tablets of stone. He wants us to have the law in our heart. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, and verse 20, we read, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil. Don't they have today people saying, Well, you know, the people that are sexually attracted to children, you know, that thing that used to be called pedophiles, why, they can't help themselves. They were born that way and and sodomites well they can't help themselves they're born that way it's god's fault except for they say they don't believe in god but they plan the blame on god if there is a god why it's his fault he made them gay and he made them pedophiles and and those horrible christians who are they to judge whether it's right to have sex with children or animals, or with men with men, or women with women. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength, to mingle strong drink, to justify the wicked for reward. Now that's your judges, people. You give somebody a bribe, a big enough bribe, and any judge will, doesn't matter the facts of the case, he'll rule in favor of the wicked. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble. Think about the end times. You know, when the Lord destroyed the earth in the days of Noah, he used the water. Well, in the end times, it's going to be fire. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law, the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them, and the hills did tremble. Earthquake? Much? We read about the land trembling in Matthew 24, in the book of Revelation, the book of Joel. And their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with seed swiftly. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall sleep, slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosened, nor the latch of their shoe, shoes be broken. Whose arrows are sharp and their bows bent, their horses' hooves shall be haunted like flint, and their wheel a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. Uh, this is talking about the invading armies that the Lord's sending to punish his people. They shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow. For the light is darkened, darkened in the heavens thereof. See, the Bible uses the past to give an example for the future. 
or for the future gives the past as an example. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2, it says, The people that walked, walked, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. And guess what? Jesus is that light. In Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 7, it says to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Did Jesus open the eyes of the blind? Oh, yeah. Did he bring the prisoners out of the prison? Yeah. That's why he went to hell for three days. Yeah, did you know that? Jesus went to hell for three days. But there was two compartments of hell. And it's called Abraham's bosom. I did a Bible study on it. A lot of people don't want to agree, but, you know, you know the, the Jews came to Jesus. They asked him for a sign. And he said, there shall no sign be given unto you except for the sign of the prophet Jonas, Jonah. For three days and three nights, he said he would be in the heart of the earth. Well, if he was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, where did he go? And what do you think he did when he was in Abraham's bosom? He preached to Abraham and to Abel and to Adam and Eve and David, and Solomon, and Samson. He preached unto them and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Believe on me. And they did. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father. That's, that's the name of that tune. Verse 42, uh, Isaiah 42 and verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Amen. In Isaiah 45 and verse 7, God says, I form the light and create darkness. Do you know darkness is just the absence of light? Do you know cold is just the absence of heat? Do you know that evil is just the absence of God? I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. God creates evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Well, technically, yes, God created evil. What? Bob, what the? What are you talking about? Well, think about it. It says in the beginning, God created everything, and God looked upon his creation, and it was good. Right? Well, God created Lucifer. Right? And he was good. And then one day, Lucifer was lifted up in pride because of the beauty. You can read that in Isaiah and Ezekiel. And he made war. Doesn't the Bible record in Revelation that there was war in heaven? The devil and his angels fought against Michael and his angels? Oh, yeah. Satan, Satan was originally a beautiful angel that covered the throne of God. He was the anointed cherub. He was. I did a Bible study on this. I, I couldn't tell you where it's at. 
Uh, I got 800 and something Bible studies, but uh, if you do a word search on my channel, you could find it. You know, I've got so many Bible studies, I can't keep up track of all the ones I've done. But, but Satan was created good originally, and he fell. So technically, God created Satan good, and he became evil. So technically, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Wow. Here's a wonderful verse. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. Isaiah has been called the mini Bible because in a lot of ways, uh, the book of Isaiah mimics the entire Bible in this one book. Uh, I believe, let's see, there's 66 books in the Bible, but in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Hmm. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 31, we read, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Now, in Amos chapter 5 and verse 10, uh, 18, it says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Verse 20, Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? even very dark, and no brightness in it. Okay. In Zephaniah, verse 1 and verse 15, it says, That day, what day? The day of the Lord. That day is a day of wrath. Now, those that are in Christ are not appointed unto wrath. And there is... Bible teachers that'll tell you that if the Lord leaves you here for the tribulation, that you're appointed under wrath. And that absolutely is not true. There's a big difference between the Lord's wrath and Satan's wrath. Just because you die for your faith in Christ does not mean that you're appointed under God's wrath. I mean, let's face it, Peter, in the Bible, Peter died for his faith in Christ. So did Stephen. Matter of fact, ten of the twelve apostles died for their faith. Millions of Christians throughout history have died for their faith. Are they under God's wrath? No. Satan's wrath, maybe. Not God's. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness, and desolation, a day of darkness, and gloominess, a day of clouds, a day of clouds. I did a, a Bible study, a playlist on clouds. Matter of fact, I think I did a playlist on um, war in heaven, where it covers how God created uh, Satan, Lucifer, good, and how he fell. So it says, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Let's go to the New Testament. Matthew 4 and verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And that was Christ, people. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region... And shadow of death, light is sprung up. In Matthew 6, 23, Jesus said, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. 
If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? In Matthew 8, 12, Jesus warns, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those that reject Christ are in big trouble. All right, now we're going to take a look. Did you know did you know that in the cru during the crucifixion of Christ there was darkness over the whole land? Did you know that? All right, let's take a look at the book of Matthew, chapter 27, and verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Um, yeah, casting a lot. You ever heard of, uh, you know, drawing straws or something? You know, whoever gets the longest straw straw or whoever gets the shortest straw um, you know that's basically what they did because uh, he had a coat that was uh, without any seams and they didn't want to rip it apart so they they cast lots for it that's basically a form of gambling so and sitting down they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now it's funny, uh, Pilate took the, the sign, it was written in Greek, Hebrew, and Latin. Now a lot of people don't know it, but Greek was the common language of, of business and commerce in these days, because Greece had conquered this area for hundreds of years, the Romans were recent newcomers when they, they had conquered what Greece had formerly conquered under Alexander the Great. Not that he was a great man, but he was a great conqueror. So that whole area spoke Greek, which is why, maybe because the New Testament was written in Greek. But if you wanted to speak to the government of Rome, you had to have somebody that knew Latin. But Latin was not necessarily co a common language among the, the common people. And then among the scholarly Hebrews, they knew Hebrew or Aramaic, at least some of them did, okay, but uh, a lot of people will tell you, oh, well, you know, Jesus was a Hebrew, so he spoke Hebrew. Mm, yeah, I, I believe that, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Jesus and his family spoke Greek. Wouldn't surprise me if he preached in Greek. Wouldn't surprise me at all. One day I'll ask him, you know. But let's take a look. Verse 38. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it, buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, say, said, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in, their, in his teeth. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the sixth hour. Ooh. 
So from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land under the ninth hour. So for three hours, there was darkness. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, now Jesus is speaking Hebrew here. And the, the Bible here is going to interpret what the Hebrew saying is. Eli, Eli, lama, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias, Elijah. So here it is, Jesus is speaking Hebrew, possibly Aramaic. And the Jews didn't even understand what he was saying. This man calleth for Elias. You see, they didn't even understand their own language. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Huh. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain in two. From the top, from God, to the bottom, to man. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The rocks were broken, people. So there was darkness. The veil of the temple rent. There was an earthquake. The rocks rent. Verse 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. How's that for a witness, people? The dead come up out of the ground. And I wonder what kind of a story they all told. I wish that was in the Bible. I'd love to hear it. Read it. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And no, these weren't zombies. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. Ah, so after three days. Because Jesus didn't wasn't resurrected until the third day, remember? And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. I wonder what they told people. Yeah, Jesus of Nazareth came down to the uh, Abraham's bosom and preached unto us, and now here we are to tell you people. Verse 54. Now when the centurion, that's a Roman soldier, now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly. An unbelieving Roman soldier feared greatly but not the Jews, knew. They feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. They had more sense than the learned rabbis running around. All right, let's go to the book of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. Doesn't mean the, the word had a beginning. It just says that in the beginning was the word. In the beginning of the heaven and the earth, the word was already there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Unless you're a Jehovah's Witnesses, and then it says, and the word was a God. So they have God and a God. Uh, let's see, if you've got God plus a God... That's two, right? No, no, no. Oh, no, no, they'll tell you. Oh, no, God's one. Okay. So, but you got God and and a God. That's two, right? No, 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 God's one. Uh, you know, the word A, they insert the word A into this to, to make it so that Jesus Christ is a God. 
But they'll tell you there's only one God. But they have to insert the word A into there to make their twisted satanic doctrines fit. No. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. That's right. God created all things, yet the Word of God created all things. Therefore, the Word of God is God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the light, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's right, people. In John 3.19, we read, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Wow. In John 12 and verse 46, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. That's Jesus. I am Come, a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Do you know that every Jew that denies Jesus is in darkness? Oh, yeah. Now, now we're getting to the good stuff. Turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2. The Acts of the Apostles. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. The Holy Spirit came upon the church. And now the apostles are taking over the ministry of Christ on earth. All right. Uh, let's see. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. I believe this is Peter speaking, but I'm not 100% sure, and I don't want to check it out. But. but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I guess I'm going to be dreaming dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy, prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Doesn't the revelation say that the blood, uh, the water will be turned to blood? Oh yeah. Verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon and the blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And people, I suggest that you believe the King James Bible in the New Testament when it says Jesus of Nazareth and not Yeshua HaMashiach. I don't see Yeshua HaMashiach anywhere in my Bible. But I see Jesus of Nazareth. That's just my suggestion. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, G, uh, Paul is recounting his story. And in verse 16... He's recounting what it was told unto him. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, 
delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Mm. In Romans 13, 12, Paul writes, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Boy, that's some uh, good advice, isn't it? So let's keep reading. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll go, you know, we'll just read verse 9. You know, there's a difference. When you don't have the light, guess what? You're in darkness. But when you have the light, there is no darkness. And have no fellowship I'm sorry. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving that which is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove means to expose. And... Uh, I had people complain that I'm not doing the works of God by exposing some wicked things. Um, but Paul says right here to expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Boy, that is so true. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Boy, that's some that's some good advice right there, isn't it? In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
every time I read this, I think it's Washington, D.C. Colossians 1.13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? You know, I find it interesting that uh, a lot of times churches will tell you not to bother to read the Old Testament because that was written for the Jews, right? And yet, Peter, or in in Acts chapter 2, he was quoting directly from the book of, of uh, Joel, right? Now, how in the world would you not know what was going on if you read that stuff? All right, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we read verse 1. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But when they, not believers, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, why in the world would the Lord, uh, why would Paul write this if everybody's going to rapture it out of here in the pre-trip rapture? Why would he say this? That that day, the day of the Lord, should not overtake you as a thief. If we're not here, this, this has no meaning. But why would he tell you this if we're not going to be here for the pre-trib rapture? Or if we're going to be gone in the pre, a pre-trib rapture? But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day, what day? The day of the Lord that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as, even as also ye do. Wow. All right, let's take a look. You know, in the book of Hebrews is really a great book for a uh, explaining and contrasting the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, or the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, I was going to read something, but it's just, it would require too much explaining, and I'd rather not get into it. But uh, let's take a look at the first book of Peter. Now, Peter is a very interesting book. You know, Peter uh, Peter was kind of a guy. You know, uh, fisherman, hard worker, like a blue-collar kind of guy, you know, a worker. You know, he was, some dry. He was just a fish. So, in 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 1, Peter writes, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and what's malice? That's hatred, people. And guile, that's 
That's uh, trickery. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, well, yeah, when you're born again, guess what? When you're born again, you're a baby in the spirit, that is. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Well, guess what? That's what teachers are for. Like, like that's what my spiritual gift is. It's to be a teacher. We're supposed to feed the babies to where they grow up to be soldiers. You know, I've had churches say, oh, we need evangelists. We need evangelists. Yeah, we do need evangelists to convert people into newborns in Christ. We need those. But an army of newborn babies is useless We need without any soldiers to protect them. We need soldiers. And very, very, very few people are willing to put the time in to be a soldier. It requires a lot of discipline and studying. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow whereby thereby and when babies get weaned they get off the milk and they eat meat most Christians choke on the meat of the Bible they can't handle it matter of fact they think people like me is a heretic and they think Benny Hinn and Crouch the Crouches and Joyce Myers and that crew and Creflo send me many a dollar and um, what's his name with it's supernatural they think those are the people of God really it's amazing they fly around in Lear jets and if they saw you starving on the street they wouldn't give you a, 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 a half of a sandwich Unbelievable. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And what's this living stone? That's Christ. Christ, Christ is the cornerstone. I did an entire Bible study on that. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy stood to offer spiritual sacrifices accepted to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion, a corner, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. See, the Catholic Church will tell you that Peter is the stone, the rock. But that's not what Peter's saying here. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Did you know that you're a chosen generation of people? A royal priesthood and holy nation. Boy, ain't nothing holy about me in and of myself. It's only, only Christ in you that's what's holy. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. 
into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which hath not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Isn't that wonderful? All right, let's go to 2 Peter. Chapter 2. Now, a lot of people will tell you that Peter didn't write 2 Peter, but I think they're a bunch of liars and deceivers. And I believe the king, the people that put together the King James Bible knew that 2 Peter belonged after 1 Peter. But that's just my opinion. And... I don't know. Verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. On TBN. Oh, oh, that's, never mind. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves which swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. You see, the time God destroyed the world with water, the next time it's going to be fire, verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live on God. Bingo! Our book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Now, I believe, I believe Jude, if I remember correctly, the brother of James also had another brother. Well, had a, uh, well, let me put it this way. Jude and James were brothers. They had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Yeah. They knew Jesus. Jude, the name of Christ, and the James, and the name of the Father, is really dark.
Revelation 16 and verse 1. We're going to go... This is talking about after the man of sin, the beast, the uh, antichrist, the false prophet appear. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Want to be interesting. Uh, the Christians are not that won't that are here that don't have the mark of the beast. They're not going to have this this sore. Okay. Then he poured out his vial upon the beast, and it became the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Remember, in Egypt, one of the plagues was God uh, uh, had his father in all the water blood. Well, I don't know if it's actual blood, but it was it was red. And they've got a phenomenon called red tide. I've seen it one time in my life, and it's a type of algae. And it's extremely poisonous. Fish die. You get it on your skin, it'll burn. You get it in your eyes, it your eyes will burn. I imagine if you drank it, you would die. I, I don't know. I've never tried it. I don't want to try it, but I've seen it one time in my life. And I live in Florida. Hopefully that's going to change soon. But just as the water was turned red in Egypt, so shall it also appear in the end times. 
And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they, who's they? The wicked. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. You see, they killed the saints, the Christians. They killed them and the prophets. So the Lord's going to say, oh, you want to you want to shed blood? Well, I'm going to give you blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat. Whoa! What do you think? Al Gore is right! Global warming! Yes, global warming is coming, people! Praise the Lord! But it's not exactly... It's not going to be man-made. It's going to be God-made. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. And I bet you they're not going to blaspheme Yeshua HaMashiach. I bet you they're going to be blaspheming, oh, Jesus Christ. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. Full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Uh, does it say here they repented not of their unbelief? No. It said they repented not of their deeds, the wickedness, the things that they were doing that was evil. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The unholy trinity. Oh, let's see. Didn't Wasn't the plague of frogs one of the plagues in Egypt? Yes, it was. And I did a Bible study on this. It's in the play, my playlist. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Wow. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Remember, Jesus said it is finished. Well, here it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every fl island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Boy, that's an earthquake. All the islands are, are destroyed. The mountains were leveled flat. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Remember, there was hail in Egypt, remember? And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, 
I believe that's 70 pounds. Uh, it's about 32 kilograms for you European people. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Uh, now, everybody, I'm going to make, I'm going to rename this Bible study uh, Darkness. I mean, this is still the book of Joel. It's going to be in my playlist um, on the day of the Lord. It's going to be on my playlist, uh, the book of Joel. And it's also going to be a standalone study called Darkness. So if you see uh, the same study renamed twice, you know, you'll know. Also, uh, keep an eye out on my new website. I'm totally anticipating YouTube and Google booting me off. I totally expect that to happen soon. So, you know, keep an eye out for uh, Chaplain Bob Walker. Um, I've got a website all set up, and when they boot me off here, um, I backed up all my Bible studies, and I'm ready to repost them to a new website along with my uh, the things that I've written and a few things that I've snatched off the internet from other people that are well worth uh, w worthy of being read. So, all right, all right, we're getting ready to close this out. In Revelation 8, and verse 12, And the fourth angel sounded. Remember, there's seven trumpets in the book of Revelation. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Interesting. Verse 9, verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Doesn't the, the Bible say, talk about a, a vapor of smoke in the book of Joel and, and for the day of the Lord? Oh, yeah. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. Sounds like a volcano, doesn't it? As the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. All right, well, I think, uh, let's see. Let's go back and read Joel chapter 2 again, verse 2. We read, well, let's read verses 1 and 2 again. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Isn't that, you know, it all ties in, people. So, all right, well, I think this is going to be the end of that. So if, uh, like I said, if Google, YouTube, Google, boot me off, uh, please, please, uh, take, keep an eye out. I'm going to, I've got a website all set up. Um, so keep an eye out. Just, uh, type in Chaplain Bob Walker. And if, uh, Google doesn't show you, uh, use Dogpile, um, uh, use DuckDuckGo. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm going to be around. I'm not quitting, but uh, I truly and totally believe that uh, YouTube and Google is going to boot me off one day. So, 
All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, I pray. Amen.